Good morning. Today we are going to be talking a little bit about liftoff and why it is considered the most troublesome variable in eddy current testing. Let's begin. So this is one of my favorite testers, the Nortec Workstation 2000. This instrument came out in the late 90s and was only made for a little while and then due to mergers and acquisitions and things like that, existing inventory was disposed of and only a few of these things remain in the marketplace. But I like the huge eight and a half inch screen and the smart knob that turns like butter. Um, a lot of cool features on this one. So, as I stated at the beginning of the video, liftoff is considered the most troublesome, or at least one of the most troublesome, variables in eddy current testing. Because of that, it has to be controlled. Because if liftoff is not controlled, you will have a compromised test and you'll miss flaws. And that's not something that we want. Liftoff is measured in a dimension. It can be inches, it can be millimeters, but it's a physical measurement. Fill factor is a little bit different. That's a ratio. But let's talk about what exactly is liftoff. You know, it's a distance. How far is your coil away from your surface? But what it's really talking about is the efficiency of the magnetic coupling. So eddy current test instruments, you know, they have a lot of circuitry in them and they have a lot of computing power. And how they extract information from the material is through the coil's magnetic field. All material information affects eddy currents. Eddy currents, as you know, produce a secondary magnetic field which opposes the primary magnetic field produced by the test coil. So as you're scanning a good material with no flaws, homogeneous, that balance really between the primary field and the secondary field is going to remain somewhat steady. But as you scan your coil over a material, eddy currents are going to um, decrease if it's a crack, right? Eddy currents will decrease, secondary field will decrease, primary field will increase, and that is going to change the test coil impedance. How? Well, if you have a crack, going to weaken eddy currents, that's going to give more energy back to the coil. And when you have more current in the coil, more current and voltage, in tandem, your impedance is going to go up. So a flaw will cause an increase in coil current. And because the current's going up, its opposition is also going up. And the total opposition would be made up of resistance and inductive reactance of the coil. Okay, so we know that liftoff is a term used to describe the physical measurement between the test coil and the test material. And what it's really talking about is the measure of magnetic coupling efficiency. So naturally, a test will be more sensitive when the test coil is on the surface of the part. And that's normally where you want to be. However, you know, there are times when we have to test materials with paint. And let's say we don't even care about the paint thickness, so we're not even going to get into measuring non-conductive coating thickness yet. But if you wanted to test a material that's got a thin coat of paint on it, yes, it's possible with any current. You just have to account for it and know that you're not going to be as sensitive as if the material was not painted. But uh, you can examine that as long as it's not, you know, the paint's not more than like a quarter inch thick. That would be way, way, way too much for eddy current. As you know, eddy current testing uh, only is good about to around two tenths of an inch, give or take. You know, a lot of what that depends on is the diameter of your coil and the test frequency that you're running. And of course, the material that you're testing. Wide coils have much more depth of penetration as do low frequencies, 
But when you get down into the very small diameter coils and high test frequencies that they're usually operated at, um, you're going to be only inspecting the very top thin layer of the material. So now that we've got this instrument <clears throat> all ready to go, and I got a probe here. So this is a probe. It's just a probe that I grabbed out of a kit. 500 kilohertz center frequency. Well, actually, it says 100 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. So you wouldn't hook this probe up and drive it at 3 megahertz because it's not going to be optimal. This probe is designed to work between 100 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. So if you look right here on my workstation, if you can even see it, it's 310 kilohertz. I just picked that at random. So first thing I'm going to do is just uh, I'll hit the erase button and I'll see that my null point is in the lower right hand portion of the screen. And I'm just going to touch. I've got a cow block here that's got some ferrite, 304 stainless, copper nickel, magnesium, and a couple of different types of aluminum. I'm just going to touch the ferrite to see where I'm at. It's going vertical. You know, normally you set that ferrite up here, upper left, if you're doing conductivity curves, you vector ferrite to go straight up. But I'm not really doing a conductivity curve here today, so I don't care about that. Now I'm touching 304 stainless, magne uh, copper nickel, magnesium, and then two different aluminums. So now I'm just going to move on over to a piece of 7075 T6 aluminum. So this is what we're going to be looking at. I will hit the frequency and then let's see here. Give me a break. Display screen vertical position. So I'm just going to be cranking vertical position up a little bit. Uh, actually, angle was what I was looking for. So we're just going to set that. I'm tapping on my material, tapping just like the dentist. Erase. We'll hit no. Okay, maybe the uh, maybe I'll take the gain down a little bit, and then I'm going to move the horizontal position over just a tad. Erase. Maybe take the gain down a tad. Get it on screen there. All right. Now, I'm going to be making a lot of videos because I have a lot of information to share with future eddy current uh, leaders of our industry. Now, I have been teaching the NDT ET level three course for AST for several years. And I've done a tremendous amount of research uh, in eddy current testing and electromagnetic testing in general. And I've been through all the textbooks and I've paid particular attention to the language and the vernacular uh, used in eddy current testing, the technical terms. And when I do these videos, I'm going to make an effort to use the most technical terminology. And that is terminology that you would encounter on an ASNT level three test, perhaps. So that's why when I talk about liftoff, that's a term that everybody's heard. Uh, I'm also going to use the term magnetic coupling efficiency because that's what that's addressing. So I take my coil. This is my air point. That's also called the operating point for the coil in air. And a coil in air is what you call an unloaded coil. Kind of like an electrical circuit, maybe the light bulb is the load. That's the thing that draws the energy. Um, when you have an unloaded coil, your impedance point's just sitting there in air. That's your air operating point. Now, watch what happens when I take my coil and slowly bring it down to my sample of 7075 T6 aluminum. The operating point is shifting and it comes to rest at the far right of my screen there. That's when my coil is in contact with the EDM block. Uh, the coil is sitting on a good section of the sample. And so my air operating point is on the left 
And my 7075 T6 operating point is on the right. And that line that you see forming there is the liftoff line or the liftoff vector. I could have easily tilted it clockwise or counterclockwise. It's still going to be a vector and it's still going to be a series of small impedance changes all connected together by that trace. So you've got two operating points and a whole bunch of different impedance points in between. Now, let's scan over one of our cracks and see what kind of response we get. So as you can tell, we're not getting a lot of feedback from the three flaws in the Cal standard. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the display screen and we're gonna we're gonna make the presentation similar to what a lot of people do for surface testing. We're gonna put the operating point like to the lower part of the screen. And we're probably gonna to have to bring it over to the left a little bit. And then we're going to, we're gonna crank in some more gain. I have to null it again. And you know, when you're doing eddy current testing, you're doing a setup. Don't think that you're just gonna make a few keystrokes and make a few adjustments and you're gonna be dialed right in. You know, it's a lot of tweaking the system and making lots of adjustments and that's okay. That's just how you have to do it. That's how you have to go about it. So, that's my operating point for the aluminum. It's got my coil on the aluminum right now. Now, when I scan past the cracks, I get a little bit more of a response. But I still don't like them. <sighs> so what am I gonna do next? Well, first of all, let's crank in a little bit more gain and see what that does for us. Now, when I have just the, the gain item highlighted here that adjusts the horizontal and vertical gain in tandem right now they're both at 75 decibels but i could increase or decrease the horizontal and vertical gains individually by just selecting horizontal gain or vertical gain but right now it's going to alter them both in tandem so i'm cranking it up a little bit scanning back past the flaws as i do so and now i've got you know fairly horizontal liftoff line and I've got some good amplitude or voltage of the signal so that's good but maybe I want to give them a little bit more vertical amplitude so what I'm doing is increasing the separation angle between liftoff and our signals of interest so separation angle is something that you'll see when you're using the slide rule a lot and when you're talking about F90 test frequencies or F120, that's the frequency that gives you the most, or the uh, required phase separation between your ID and OD flaws. And you're going to need to know what it means. And all it means is the separation angle is if you take liftoff that's horizontal, right now the separation angle between that and this deep EDM notch, which is like what, 35 degrees? That's a separation angle of 35 degrees, not rocket science. If I were to use a higher test frequency, that's gonna cause more phase lag because it takes more time for higher frequencies to penetrate through the material. If I'd increase the test frequency, these indications would start to tilt more clockwise or rotate more clockwise. That would be increasing the separation phase angle between liftoff and those flaws. So that's a little bit about that terminology. But what I wanna do now is adjust the vertical gain. And just like the dentist, I'm gonna tap, tap, tap on the material. And, uh oh, let's see here what we got going on here. See, a lot of adjustment. I'm going to lower the horizontal gain a little bit. And then I'm gonna raise the vertical gain a little bit. See what that did to our signals. 
gives us a little more separation. Now that I've adjusted the vertical gain to be a little bit higher, now I can adjust them down in tandem a little bit. So I can bring everything back on screen a little bit better. Yeah, let's see here. Boop, boop, boop. So for now, we'll go with that, okay? And then we'll just look at how some different levels of fill factor can compromise our test. So <clears throat> I have a Nortec calibration sample kit and it's got this, this array of different non-conductive coating thicknesses. And if you look on the label here, you can see which, uh, what the thickness for each color is. So amber is one mil thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that piece of amber and I'm gonna lay it on top of my aluminum. First, we'll just try, see what happens to the operating point. Okay. So the far right side of my screen there, that's the operating point for aluminum. And if I put one mil of non-conductive coating in there, see what a difference that made? I mean, that's like two whole divisions just from one mil of non-conductive coating thickness. That's with the coating, that's without the coating. Now let's try and scan over a crack with and without that one mil of non-conductive coating thickness. So I'm gonna erase, I'm gonna hit null. That's gonna null and air, okay? So obviously now when I bring my coil down in the material, it's gonna shoot off to the right. So what I'm gonna do is re-null. Okay, that, you're seeing the operating point of my coil on the bare metal. Now I'm gonna scan across the, it looks like the that's the deepest of the three cracks. That's probably like 20 mils or something like that. Notice the size of it. It's only one division shy of going off screen. And now when I put the one mil sheet of non-conductive coating film, first of all, notice what happened to my operating point. It shifted to the left. Remember the way we had this calibrated air was off to the left and then the operating point from the material is way off to the right. Just putting that non-conductive coating film on there, just one mil of it, that shifted our operating point over towards air. That was increasing the lift off. But now that we have the film on here, I'm gonna scan over that same indication. And notice that it's it's still about two, two divisions or, or so off to of the left, but the amplitude or the voltage of that signal or the size of that signal has gone down a bit. So you can see by introducing just a little tiny bit of liftoff, you are decreasing uh, test sensitivity quite dramatically. So, and one other point to make about liftoff is the biggest magnitude of change when it comes to liftoff is just the first little teeny bit of probe lift off. And then as you add in another mil, so you got two mils of lift off and three mils of lift off. Incrementally, the magnitude of that change gets less the farther you get away from the surface. So if you wanna have the best test, maintain uh, contact with zero lift off and keep it that way, right? Or if you're going to have a little bit of lift off, it'd be nice to make it constant somehow. Maybe having uh, a spring in your probe that keeps the coil pressed down on the surface. If you're going along the edge, now we're talking about edge effect and not really lift off. But, you know, you can use fixtures to always keep the coil orientation and distance to the material, you know, as, as consistent as possible. So now hopefully with this video you've learned a little bit more about the terminology and the vernacular used with liftoff, and you understand a little more why it is the most troublesome variable in eddy current testing. Stay tuned, I'll see you back soon.